everyone, my name is Tamara Chambers and this is Tamara Just Saw. And tonight I went and saw Hellfest. How much longer? Oh man, I thought I was almost done with this video. No, there's 10 minutes left. Wow. So much to talk about. <laughs> you know, it's just. I just. Uh, mm, you know, you know. There is definitely gonna be spoilers in this. It was just an okay film. I had fun with it. And so if you think you might wanna go see it and have fun with it, maybe don't watch this, but I'm not gonna not reveal every single detail of this movie right now. So just <laughs> gear up for that. Hellfest is a scary slasher movie that takes place in a haunted house festival setting. I love the idea of it. It's very relatable in the sense that, you know, I've been to a lot of haunted houses. They really do a good job playing up the aspect of like the nervous, the nervous, the nervous energy that you get at a haunted house. There's like a lot of like giggling and like trying to act like really cool and mostly nervousness is what I got from the actors and it, it totally made sense. It, it was super relatable in that sense. It also wasn't scary. It was definitely relatably uh, jump scary because it's like haunted houses are like, it's just all people just jumping out at you. Just like that. But it wasn't scary until the very end, there was a, a very, I would say a suspenseful scene that was really well done. And I super enjoyed. The last scene was, was really cool. The second to last scene was really cool. The very last scene was a huge bummer of a reveal, but <laughs> we'll get to that. It was definitely good enough to like get through the film with. I had a good time watching this movie. It wasn't like boring. It wasn't, you know, a chore to get through, but it wasn't a revelation of horror like Hereditary. We just all saw Hereditary was amazing. This was, no hereditary. <laughs> my theater was surprisingly full. I think people other than myself are very ready for October to be here and Halloween to be here. I had two other movie reviewers in my theater. I didn't ask them, but they were both writing things down in notepads. So they were either movie reviewers or like very big horror nerds. And the rest of the theater were horror nerds, it seemed. And it was uh, a fun audience to see it with, though I think we were all on the same page with it just being pretty subpar. Other than that last scene, I think that really did a great job building suspense and being scary. Everything else was, it was just jump scare, but it really fit in. I said in uh, the remake of Jumanji, if there were any cheesy like CGI things or something didn't look real, it's a really easy thing that they could play off that it's like, well, we're in a video game, so that's fine, it makes sense. This is a very similar thing where like, we're at a haunted house and like all of the scares are stupid jump scares. So you feel like you're in a, like a really cool haunted house for the whole movie. I really love haunted houses and you get a different kind of horror because you're subjecting yourself to it. And it's the same in this, like in a lot of horror films, they're not asking for these things to happen, but in this they're asking for it. They're at a, they're not asking to be murdered brutally, obviously, but they're asking for that fear and that's like nervousness and you know, high stakes anxiety that you get at a horror haunted house festival. <laughs> and so it was a relatable fear. With that, it was just, just kind of jump scary. Again, other than that last scene. The film opens on a murder that happened a few years back at the same horror festival in another town. You see this horrific murder happen and this guy comes into the festival, he kills this girl, he uses her as a prop and then she's there for three days until somebody actually figures out that she's not just a prop in the, the, the horror fest. She's a real human that has been murdered. Cut to a group of six friends, three couples who are going to this murder festival, you really don't get invested in four of the six characters, I would say. I think the two best friends are good enough. They're in the scene that I keep talking about that was actually suspenseful at the end, and there definitely are two leads, but the other four didn't capture my attention at all. I really didn't care about them. And especially the other girl in, in this sixth, she, 
was like very aggressive. She was, so she's that person that you go to a haunted house with and is like too excited about it. That's how they're getting their nerves out is they're like, this is so much fun. And that's like literally how I am at a, a haunted house. And the whole time I was just like, oh my God, calm down. And I'm like, oh wow, that is me though. <laughs> but she was like way too excited. She also, this is such a personal thing, it has nothing to do with a, like a reflection of the movie, but she was super gay and then like was in a straight relationship and it was really weird. I just wish they would have just made her gay, I think. It's a really good use of haunted house lore though and they set it up where, you know, you can go to like a, a kitty one and then you go to the next level one and then a really scary one and then the last one, they can touch you and then the very last one is supposed to be like the end of the night, like you finish off there. If you've gotten that far, then you have conquered this hell fest. And I like the levels that it sets up and that's something that I would so fall for. I've been to like Six Flags Fright Fest where it's just a bunch of college students who are trying to make extra money who probably are in the theater department and <laughs> are pretty miserable. <laughs> it's not scary and it's just kind of fun to be there with people dressed up trying to scare you but it's it's not a scary thing and that's kind of what you go into haunted houses with because I've like um, you know seen a bunch of audition postings for haunted houses. So you go into those things and you're like it's just people, it's just people, it's just people. That's how you like keep your cool throughout the whole thing. But this guy goes in, he's an actual murderer and he's following around the, this group of people who we're knowing through the film. And that's really creepy. The mask is really creepy. And it's a great premise. I just wish there was more suspense and less jump scares. And I don't hate jump scares. I know a lot of people are like, I like horror, but I just don't like jump scares. I like it all. I love all horror. I do not mind jump scares if there's more to it than just that. But this was pretty much just jump scares. Until you get to this last scene, four of the six have been killed. So we've got our two leads that I liked more than the other. And they're going through the very top tier. And how they get there is super dumb. The park announces that they've finally realized that there's a killer amongst them. They're like, evacuate. And the two girls are like, well, this looks like an exit. And it's literally the entrance to a new haunted house. <laughs> is clearly the entrance to a new haunted house. This is like not like tricky. Like it's definitely like, this is the hell house. Come on in for hell. And it's like, oh, maybe it's an exit. No, 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 not an exit. And so that's really dumb. I hated that part. But the second they get in there, they use some really cool ways to evade the guy and then she beats the crap out of him with a bat and then they call the cops and the cops come in. And, and it was suspenseful, it was cool. It was definitely the most scary part. I wouldn't call it scary, but it was definitely the most suspenseful part of the film, in my opinion. Oh, the, another thing, there's just a lot of stupid horror tropes. At one point, the killer follows her into the bathroom and he, like in Top Gun, same thing. Same basic premise as Top Gun. He follows her in and he's in the cell next to her and she texts the guy that she has a crush on and the killer has at this point killed him and gotten his phone and is just chilling next to her in the bathroom stall and when she texts the guy it dings next to her and she's like well that's weird but not weird enough for me not to freak out so we're just gonna keep going even though she's been followed all night by a weirdo then she notices that the killer is there and she's like I'm calling the cops and then immediately calls the cops and it's like call has failed and it's like well you literally you just messaged your crush and it went through with ease and you're in like a populated area that there's no way that your call would fail this is 2018 the land of technology and the end is the killer gets away and he like drives up to his suburban home and he hangs his mask and he locks it up away and he walks in to a living room and there's like a little child on the couch and there's like really suspenseful music playing and then the child wakes up and he's like, Daddy, you're home! And then he hugs her and that's the end. So this, the, the, the like twist of it all or like the reveal is that he's just a normal guy, he's everyday white dude. Like, I don't know, <laughs> it's not too hard to believe, right? <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting from the reveal. I was kind of expecting there not to be a reveal, that it was just kind of like a dude, but it felt a little like, just kind of forced a bit. The ending was definitely the most sad, bummery part about this film, because the rest I had a good time with. I wouldn't write this one off. I, I think it was fun enough to see it with friends and maybe have a beer or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine first and um, enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.